Hi there, I'm Black Bright. Um, welcome to my channel. Just want to thank all of you who have subscribed and um, like. Hope I don't disappoint you. I talk about a variety of things and today I'm talking about um, those people who come to London. What are they expecting? Um, yeah, because the reason why I'm doing this video is because I myself, I'm born in London, so therefore I'm not familiar with what it costs as a tourist to come to London. So my, I have two family members who are visiting. So they called me and they said, look, we're coming to London and our hotel is in London and we'd like to go to Big Ben and we'd like to go to Buckingham Palace and we'd like to see the London Eye and Madame Two Swords. And I'm thinking to my head, wow, I think that's quite expensive. Anyway, I said, let me check it out. So what I did when I started checking out, well, number one, they're not staying in a London hotel. The fact that they saw Heathrow, London Heathrow, they thought Heathrow Airport was in London, which is not surprising for somebody who is coming from the outside. They see London, they're going to think that that airport is in London. Well, Heathrow Airport is in West Drayton. Um, it's several miles from London and it's not easy well, I shouldn't say it's not easy to get from um, Heathrow to London, but it is if you're not driving. And driving isn't cost effective. To go to the airport, number one, you don't know how long people are going to be detained. So you're looking at about £12 for parking for two hours. Um, if it's just 30 minutes, I think it's £7.50. But for two hours, that's £12. Um, also, um, once your once you arrive in at Heathrow Airport, you're probably going to be staying if you haven't arranged for some. This is for tourists, so let's just talk about tourists because I don't want to confuse. And you're going to be doing one of these um, trips that take you on some kind of excursion, like my family members are going on. They're coming to London, they're here for a couple of days, and then they're going to Paris, and they're going to Italy, and they're going to Spain, and they're doing one of those tours. So what they thought was, oh, we are coming to London, my, my family member lives in London, um, so therefore we can hook up and we can she can take me to all of these places and it seems easy enough from somebody who for, is from the outside. And the thing is, when I go to America, my family, they come and meet me from the airport, wash, wash, everybody, nothing is too far for people in America. They drive miles and miles and miles for days and they think it's nothing. But for, in England, it's a bit different. Number one, I don't like driving long distances, which makes it a bit difficult. I think if I didn't mind the driving, it wouldn't be too bad. But even then, I'd still have to be thinking about a £12 parking fee. If I drove to London, I'd have to be thinking about the congestion charge of £11.50 a day. And then I'd have to be thinking about the parking, which is also between 11 and twelve fifty a day. So it's not really that much different to be honest. And plus, once you park in one place, and if you want to go somewhere else, you're kind of restricted. You're going to have to park, pay for parking somewhere else. So driving in central London is not wise. That's the first thing. So, okay, you've got off at Heathrow Airport. You realise now that you're in the middle of nowhere and that your family member um, isn't able to pick you up. So you're going to get a shuttle to from, your, um, from the airport to your hotel. Now, that'll probably cost you nothing because it's probably a part of the deal. So, in, in investigating the day I wanted to plan with my family, I realised that to for them to, if they were to come to me then and I was going to take them out and drive locally, it would have cost them £44 each to get from Heathrow Airport to Bedfordshire. Now, for two people, that's £88. I cannot justify asking them to pay £88 to come to visit me. So what I decided to do, I decided I'd buy my ticket and I'll go and see them and then take them to London. So uh, the plan is to go to Heathrow Airport, well, to meet them at the 
meet them at the hotel. Um, from the hotel, we go to Heathrow Underground, and from Heathrow Underground, we go to, I'll get them Oyster Cards, which they have visitors Oyster Cards, um, if you're thinking about visiting. They have um, one for £15 for two days, and I think it's £30 for four days. And um, you pay £5 for the card, and it, you can have it forever. So if you came back a few years later and you wanted to use it and you hadn't used what you had used, you can actually keep it. So, yeah, so they have something called the Oyster Card, the Visitor's Oyster Card. So I intend to take them to get their Oyster Card. So um, because they're not, I'm just talking about the cost now of travel, because I was, when I'm thinking about London being expensive, living here, you can find different ways to make it a bit cheaper. I mean, we go to Asda or we go to Tesco or whatever and you pick up, you look for your little bargains and if you're want, if you if you high end, you'll probably go to Debenhams to shop or Harrods. If you're low end, you go to Primark. If you're middle range, you go to Next or, you know, um, Zara and all those kind of things. And you know how to navigate the different shops and the prices. For tourists, though, they don't know that. And the biggest expense, I realise, is the travel. So when they say London is expensive, it's the travel. Because, OK, hypothetically, £5 from the airport, from the hotel to the underground at Heathrow. Then 15 or 30, depending on what how many days they're here. So we'll talk about them. They're here for four days. So they'll buy the £30 Oyster car. So that's £35. Once they get into London, if they want to go to Big Ben, they can't go to Big Ben apparently because it's only for UK residents. So, OK, they want to go to Buckingham Palace. That's £24 for the tour. If they want to go to Houses of Parliament, that's £25 for the tour. If they want to go to Madame Tussauds, that's £27. If they want to take the bus um, around to save them walking from all these different destinations, that's £32 if you're over 16, £32.50. So you can see the London Eye, the London Eye is £32.45 if you're over 16. So you can see why it's so expensive. And you know, what one of my family said, oh, well, can't you pick us up and drive? But like I said, even if I was, even if I was a type to drive all those miles to, to the airport and pick them up 12.50 and then take them to the airport, take them to their hotel and then drive to London. It's a bloody nightmare. And then on top of that, you've got the congestion charge and you've got the parking. It's a nightmare. So this is where the travel on the train is more efficient. But there again, it's expensive. So I think um, £15 is not too bad if it lasts you for two days. Um, you'll have to work it out in your local currency to see how much that translates and whether or not you think it's reasonable. Um, food down the West End, well, if you want to go low end, you've got McDonald's, you've got Kentucky, you've got um, Burger King. But if you're thinking about proper restaurants, that's going to set you back a bit as well. I mean, like I said, they probably have the different ranges from the top end to the middle to the low end, depending on your budget. But I would say, you know, for travel alone, for two days, two to four days, if you're going back and forth, well, not for travel alone, but for travel and for visiting all the tourist attractions, you're looking at 200 quid, I would say, just so you have a pretty good idea how much. And then if you're going on to different um, towns and um, places like Italy and um, Spain. Spain is quite economical. Spain is not too bad. I love Spain. But Italy, that's another expensive place. And France, when you're just thinking about the travel, I went to Paris a couple of years ago and from the airport to the hotel, which was about a 20 minute drive, was nearly 50 pounds. Pounds, the equivalent of 50 pounds. A burger, I think a burger was like £12. And then I wanted one of these creme brulee 
And it was all flames, it was all flames coming out of it. And I saw this lady eating it. And I'm like, oh, I've got to have one of those. That was like 18 pounds. Now, I don't know which part, whether where I was, was expensive or not expensive. It didn't look expensive. It just looked like an ordinary street, a bit like Covent Garden down that side or Islington, you know, where they have all those um, tables outside. It looked a bit like that. But yeah, you have to have money for travel and food. Um, like I said, with clothes, if you're looking for clothes or if you're looking for souvenirs, you know, that's not too bad unless you want a Harrods bag. That can set you back a bit. I think they're about 27 quid. But yeah, just be prepared that when you're coming to London, when people say it's expensive, that's what they mean. But indigenous people who live here, because they know how to travel and because they know how to buy, it's not going to seem that expensive as it is to tourists. And I guess, you know, regardless of where you go as a tourist, it's going to cost you a bit more than the locals. And it's for that reason. So I hope you found this video useful. And I think I've covered nearly everything. Oh, you know what I was going to say? If you're coming from the New York, which is where my family's coming from, when you think about a Metro card can take you from um, downtown Brooklyn to Queens, uh, you won't be able to um, understand that in terms of distance. But let me think. Um, I don't even know what the equivalent is. The equivalent probably would be like, well, not like Scotland, but it will probably be like Preston to London, maybe. But all of those different two dollars, that's how much it costs. And providing you don't come out of the station, you can actually go to all of these different places for two dollars. So if you're coming from the States, you're going to be astounded at the price for travel. I think Germany is quite expensive as well. Um, I remember going to Germany. I don't think it's as expensive as Paris and Spain. With Spain, I didn't travel in Spain because what happens is, you know, I got the, the shuttle bus from the airport right to the hotel and then most of the beaches and everything are close by. So you didn't really have to worry about that. But yeah, and I mean, going to Venice, you're probably going to want to go on the gondola and all that kind of stuff. It is expensive. You need some dosh. I reckon you probably need about, if you're going to stay for four days to feel comfortable and not run out of money, I'd say about £500. Well, maybe a little less, but at least you won't run out of money with £500. Think about it as £100 a day. Because that's how much I set aside when I was in Paris. I was only there for a long weekend, three days, £100, and I came back broke. Three days. And £300. I think it was a little over that. So just to bear that in mind. And I wasn't extravagant. And I didn't buy no clothes or anything like that. That was just travel and food. Okay, bye-bye.